Seems like a, oh. dr a dragon's oh. age. We're back, folks. Hi. Welcome to another explosive, exciting oh. episode of, of... I apologize for that. Crep from the 80s. Ah, Tansky, it's... It's been too long. I know, I know. Where, 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 where have we been? <laughs> I don't know where you've been. Oh, you've been here, yeah. Been here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess one of those crazy... Life. Carry type things. Yeah, I was on assignment. On a million assignments. And, uh, and uh, doing some special correspondence with... Uh, Various, no, I was, it, it's nations. life. You, you know, know, one of these days, we'll find her. Yes, hopefully. You know? <laughs> It'd be funny if she just popped up right now. Oh, hey, what a miracle. La, la. What a miracle. <laughs> oh, but yes, so we're back. Oh Wonderful. This is, this is I enjoy, I missed it. No. We're in a different area, as yes. you can see. Yes, we have a different background. Folks. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> Same old seavage. Better that end than the other. We are in the home theater room, uh, Casa de Sievage here. Uh, uh, we, we use this room mostly for the horror type stuff that we talk about, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, today is no exception. We are going to talk about Fangoria Magazine. Brilliant. Yes. Huh? Yes. Oh, see, there's a logo right there. Oh, whoa, where'd you get that? Time and space. Oh, shit. Uh, magical. Uh, but not not just like willy-nilly Fangoria, but what Fangoria meant to us as adolescents, as teens, Children's, as yes. young adults. Yes. And, uh, and now. And yes, and our, in our voltage, <laughs> uh, with with one foot closer to the grave. Oh, that's what, a little morbid. <laughs> but apropos, considering the magazine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, Fangoria Magazine, man. So I want to get thick. I want to I want to talk about sort of when we first became aware of the magazine. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we happen to know our first issues that we bought ourselves, you know. I got a funny story there. Um, like as you said, favorite covers, mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. the covers that stick out, that stick with you throughout the years. Um, uh, the demise mm. and the resurrection. Oh. Like the, like the... The phoenix. Yes. The undead the, phoenix. The leaf phoenix, if you will. Yes. <laughs> when he was under that name. Remember <laughs> that, folks? Yeah, you kids. The Joker was named that. Leaf Phoenix back in Space Camp days. That's right. But that's another story altogether. Ah, uh, so... So... Yeah. Why don't we get... Uh, let's, let's just jump right in. Uh, and why don't you give me a... a a backstory, if a you will. Sensual massage. Of, all right, of, all right. Or a sensual montage of <laughs> of my dealings with of your dealings with Fangoria magazine from the eighties. Well, my father, huh? being a fan of the genre of horror, uh, ground floor, first step uh, issue, Godzilla. He had it from the get go. Mm -hmm. Subscription. He's had one for you know till the very end of uh, the first incarnation. Uh, uh, so I've been, it's been a part of my life uh, since I was uh, three years old. Yes, issue one. So always been a part of my life. Uh, my dad still has all the issues. He's got them, I don't know if he's got them bagged and boarded. I apologize. I'll, <laughs> I'll get on that with him. Uh, but yes, it's always been a part of my life when that black bag would come in the mail. You knew, uh, I guess, it you know, honestly. Chance. Yes. <laughs> or Swank. Yeah. Or Fangoria. Cherry. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I guess, essentially, even though I saw Halloween when I was six, Fangoria was probably uh, my gateway into horror because I would see that mag issue and be like, what in the, am I allowed to look at that? It was almost taboo back then because of the gore. And kudos to the guy that named it. I, I, I pro we probably should have researched that. Absolutely brilliant. Fan of fan of Gore, Van Gore. Ah, oh, must have been. Uh, well, there was a, there was a very young John Stamos. Oh, he was the one. Fangoria magazine. I mean, he's a huge genre. A comet went by, and it, it just. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, always been a part of my life, and um, I mean, just. The fondest of memories. The fondest of memories. Fonzie, Henry Winkler of memories. But uh, yes. Cat just took a shit over there. Oh, oh as it wafted, wafting. Smell it. 
if, mm, that's so macabre. <laughs> but yes, that's that's my story, okay, and I'm sticking so, to it. So you, I mean, you just willy nilly would ha there'd be magazines around the house, and there. Yeah, was my dad. Yeah. You know? He had no qualms about showing me. It, I mean, it helped enter the world of make believe. I, I think that ushered me into that that world, knowing that it was fake and not being afraid of those things. Because mm -hmm. I never really was scared of horror movies. Uh, I would have the occasional nightmare, but who wouldn't? But yeah, you know, I I think about that. I think we've talked about it as well. But in other conversations with with other folk, like-minded yes. folk, you would hear that. They were scared, right? Mm -hmm. They would have nightmares, but they were still very much attracted to it. Um, it wasn't like a deterrent. No. It was almost like a... It made me want it Yes, more. you want more. I want more. Um, so I was in that camp as well where, like, I wasn't, let's say, sh scared in the sense of I'm yelling, I'm screaming at what I'm seeing, you know? Yeah. Um, I think I would get freaked out. I definitely would have nightmares, but I would always talk about them mm -hmm. you know with I want to see that movie. yes yeah. I, I want to experience that again and, and it almost became like uh, I don't know like kids are when they're not supposed to see you know nakedness on, on, on movies <laughs> right. or, or you know HBO or whatnot it became that well I'm hiding behind the couch to, to peek to see what this scary movie right. is um, but I loved it it was so fun um, but that's cool My, mine was how I got even knew about Fangoria was because of um, video connection the of course the <laughs> video store that I grew up with in Wells New York how did you not name your firstborn video connection I know <laughs> I wish <laughs> oh. the, uh, you know? We could still make it happen. There's <laughs> there's legalities that you gotta cross, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure River won't mind. Yeah, video connection C. <laughs> VC just rolls VC off for time. short. Yeah, that's right. That's good. <laughs> VCS. VC Seavage. Um, I was probably seven, ten. Carry the one. Okay. Maybe ten. But at this point, again, I had already seen horror movies. Yeah. I had already been watching horror movies peeking at horror movies, seeing things that I shouldn't be seeing, as far as the genre is, is concerned. Because um, your grandparents weren't cool with it, or they were? Like, we're... It was very bizarre. Like, for the most part... Okay, so... So, you know, they're taking me to see Temple of Doom, they're taking me to see The Dark Crystal, they're taking me to see all these so other movies. So genre movies that have some oh, totally, creep factor to it, know, right. Uh, but, you know, I think horror, um, not so much my grandparents, because they didn't, for the most part, like, no one was really watching what I was watching. Okay. Um, it was my aunt. Okay, that's right. And that was weird, too, because I lived with, I lived with my great aunt, but my aunt, it was like some things were totally, like, fine, and it would be a situation where Oh, it's it's video night. You can pick something out too, Chris. So I would pick out, you know, whatever. Be it a weird sci-fi, fantasy, horror okay. movie, whatever. Um, and then it didn't. It wasn't like an issue. But then there were certain things that, like, if a TV commercial came on and I was like, oh, oh, you know, I gotta, I want to see that. Can we go to that? You know, she'd be like, no, like you cannot go see that. You're not gonna see that. Blah 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 blah. It was, and I'd be like, what? Uh, but know, we just watched Class of 1999. So what do you mean bizarre. we can't go? Yeah. Just so okay. weird. Um, so, so it was selective. Yeah, yeah. it was very <laughs> weird. I think I've told this story before too. It's like one of them I can so remember, vividly remember, was her getting her panties in a bunch over Bloomers. me wanting so bad to watch Little Shop of Horrors when it was coming out. Okay. The, the TV commercials were like making my face go whoa you know i was just yeah. so like i gotta see this now you did know? you know about the corman version no not at seeing? that okay point. not at that point so this was just like wow I, this is insane you know um and i had remembered starlog and that's one of the oh man um, i miss starlog one of the issues i remember 
from Fangoria because they had Audrey 2 on the cover. Yep. It was a 1986 yep, issue. Mouth open. Mouth open. Yep. Um, I, I had it. It was nice. But, um, so I was like gaga for friggin' Little Shop of Horrors. But for some reason, she wouldn't take me to see <laughs> that. It was just so weird. And at 86, so I was like, yeah. I was nine, you know? Um, but again, at that point, I had already seen so much Wor genre probably. fiction, <laughs> you know? So weird, so weird. Um, but Fangoria, it was because they had the Fangoria's Weekend of Horrors tape. Oh, nice. Okay. And video connection. So I rented it because it was horror. It had Freddy on the cover. You know, it was about movie making and you know, it had special effects stuff in it. So I would rent it all the time. And I'd be like, Fangoria, like I gotta, you know, I gotta get this. So, and I would see Fangoria. We had, uh, I guess it would be three places where it was available. One right across from Video Connection was this like typical newsstand, sure. but it wasn't a newsstand, it was a store, it was a news store, Okay. but they, that's where I got my comic books, uh, but it was, you know, the cigars and things Pre like that. Premier Magazine? <laughs> well, oh. later, yes, okay. yes, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Man, Premier. Yeah. Oh, we just got a too. new one, yeah. That was a good one, too. <laughs> Magazines of our youth um, episode. So, and like, it was the typical, very, very cliched, like, Dick Miller type Mm -hmm. guy who ran this this newsstand <laughs> and then we also had giant uh, which was our grocery store and this place called Newberry which uh, that's where I got my bionic six toys all the time oh. um, but they had magazines like that mm -hmm. uh, so I would go across the street to this place I wish I could remember it but it was right across from video connection and that is where I would just skim and read through Fangoria while I was there mm -hmm. You know, um, but it was this cassette. It was this. We have a yes. It was this. <laughs> camera one, camera two. Um, and this is the video connection copy. Wow. And it is. It is. Does it have a? Oh, it's the the mark. The <laughs> stickers are gone. Oh, it's, okay. it's just a piece. You know, I'm shocked that it still plays. It's actually broke, but it still plays. Um, so what happened was, eventually, into my teen years, as I've said before, the people at Video Connection just nice. just knew me. Yeah. And this, is, this, is yours. this ended up, <laughs> like a lot of stuff there, just ended up being mine. Um, but this is it. This is the my growing up Chris Seaver, Fangoria, Weekend of Horrors, oh, VHS. Gee. So this was, uh, this was what it was all about, man. This was my gateway into Fangoria. And then just reading it while I was perusing comics and things right. like that. Um, so, and we'll go into this, but I guess you already talked about it because your dad had a subscription to it. But my first issue that I bought myself was 1989. Okay. And it was 80... 89. Let me, let me try and... It was, num it was issue 87. 89. So and it I'm had, gonna go with Halloween Five on the cover. It had um, Phantom of the Opera. Okay. Robert England's Phantom yep. of the Opera. With his nose. And yep. Trump. Yep. Okay. That was the first issue. Sadly, I do not have it to this day because what I would do. You would cut them up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would cut up my magazines and put the pictures on the wall. Of course. Remember, folks, Fangoria had the poster that you, you got. Oh, excuse you. Oh. And uh, so I would... Even the poster issues. Yeah, I didn't even, you know, I didn't care as much, certainly. You didn't know. As a kid, you yeah. just, whoosh, whoo, going up. Yep. You know, wanted to show I was a cool, you know, geeky horror kid. <laughs> but it was like that with anything. Right. You know, comic book stuff I would put up, and, you know, when Wizard started coming out, I would do it with Wizard, any of that crap. So... Um, but that was my first issue that I bought myself with like chore money. <laughs> chore money. And I was uh, 12 years old. That was my first Fangoria. My first was the uh, the, the very first of the new issue. <laughs> oh, because you... I never had to buy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Intriguing. Yes. Intriguing. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so, what do you think? I, so, we are fans to this day mm -hmm. of the magazine. Yes. Um, is there a, is there something that, a feeling that you get when you see a Fangoria magazine? Because for me, it is all connected. It really is connected to everything else 80s for me. Um, just just like seeing a television show, a cartoon, you know, movies, anything like that. Fangoria evokes that feeling of childhood nostalgia for me. Oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, it had such a specific look to it with the film reel and the, the name across and then you had the photo and they never really de deviated that much over the course of all, all the years. Um, in fact, this year is, is going to be the 40th. Indeed. In, in some form. Uh, so, yeah, easily. Just, well, especially whatever topic was the, the main choice, that takes me back to, you know, when that movie came out. Because I saw a lot of these things in theaters because my dad would take me to them. Uh, so, it definitely evokes that 80s feel. Obviously, it tapered off as I got older and wasn't around as much or living at home with my dad, but I would still see issues on the stands in, in like a Barnes and Noble or. Mm -hmm. Mostly just that, and it's not something Wegmans, which was, our, which is our local grocery store, would carry. But I would still peruse, even when quality was somewhat going down, and the writing and the articles. Yeah, for me, I, I feel like uh, that didn't really start happening until the the alts. Yes. I would say um, in the because, last ten years or so. Yeah. Because. Uh, Fangoria became, for me, going into my teen years, going into the 90s, um, it became like a very huge deal. Mm -hmm. Very huge deal. Uh, a lot because I was getting more and more serious as far as Being making a filmmaker. movies. Yeah. Um, so as much as I have that nostalgia for the 80s issues and the, the you know, having that first issue and all that stuff, the 90s really... Kind of defined you as... For, for yeah. Fangoria and me and and what it meant to me, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so much so that we had a... Uh, so... My parent, my aunt, my great aunt, who also lived with us, mm -hmm. she bred Rhodesian Ridgeback. So they built a kennel in our backyard. And then behind the kennel, they had built this, this shed, <laughs> right? And I would say the shed was about as big as this room. Damn, a, club, um, a clubhouse, if you will. Well, <laughs> that's what it became. Okay. <laughs> that's not what it was supposed to be. <laughs> Because um, originally it was just to keep more stuff for the the dogs. The dogs. Yeah. Well, I would I would say probably ninety three, ninety four, that wasn't that anymore. <laughs> and I said, well, can I just turn it into a uh, place for me and my friends to go and like sleep over at night, and we'll bring a little TV out there and VCR and all so this stuff. So there was stuff. electricity and... Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Nice. Um, and they were like, okay. And so it became the Fangoria Horror Club. Oh. Did you have a little... No. Okay. <laughs> no. But we That's put, I mean, we posters. spray painted okay. like the name all over it, but we put posters. We, you know, there was a couch, there was all sorts of stuff out there. And that became our like sleepover pad. Um, but that, so that was, you know, that was all because of Bingo, our yeah. love of horror and <laughs> making backyard horror movies. And this was my group of friends making these movies with me. So I got, I, I was the weird kid. Okay. I was the horror kid. I was the only- You weren't the smelly kid too. Uh, no, I was okay, just good. the weird kid in Wellsville, New York, who did stuff. Nobody else, because everyone else- this, well, Yeah, you had the Ghostbuster Club too. Yeah, yeah. this <laughs> town was so backwoods. So how many, what population? I don't even, 
It's not, it wasn't big. It still isn't big. Okay. <laughs> um, so did most people, oh, there's that, that Seaver kid? Absolutely. Okay. Um, What's he up to now? Yes. Okay. I was considered a bad influence. Oh. Because, oh. <laughs> because I made movies, because I liked horror movies, because I was weird and I was goofy. I didn't take anything seriously. So somehow in these backwood brains, I was the bad influence. So people would <laughs> I don't be want like, you hanging out with that Chris Seaver. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. I didn't never did any drugs, I didn't drink, nothing. It was just because I was so bizarre. I didn't I didn't ride four wheelers, I didn't fish. I didn't hunt. I wasn't into sports, which was Wellsville. Okay. You know? Um, so I had to wrangle the kids to be a part of this group. Okay. Which became the first wave of Low Budget Pictures, the thing that I started. Okay. Um, so it was me, I guess. That could be bad influence as far as showing the horror movies to the kids, well, kids, my age, right. you know, um, getting them into that stuff, showing them stuff they had never seen before, <laughs> you know, and dragging them into making crappy movies. <laughs> um, and then ultimately, you know, the Fangoria Horror, horror Club. Club. And FHC for getting those blame. guys into it and, and you know, trading issues and just, so they they embraced it or were they just following, oh they, to following they your totally lead? Did. okay they totally did but when it became very apparent that oh this is chris you know oh um oh. it kind of you know people grow right and move on i don't you stayed the same i was the same <laughs> chris that i have always been and that didn't really jive with other people. So they all dispersed and grew up. So they're going out on dates and you're... Well, I certainly <laughs> did, but I would be like, you know, we're gonna watch, watch this, you know, we're gonna do <laughs> we're this watching Critters and, too, you gotta baby. see this issue, you know, like crap like that. She's you know? trying to kiss you and you're like, no, there's a cool scene coming up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Or, oh, I was so like, <laughs> I was one of those... I'm not making out in the movie, absolutely. I'm watching the movie. No, I'm watching this movie, <laughs> you know? It depended on the movie, like, like I remember, I remember going to see friggin' uh, Super Mario Brothers with my then girlfriend at the this time. Is stoink, so and I was like, you know what? We can we can do this. <laughs> we'll go back and start making out because this is garbage, you know. Um, but for the most part, you know, I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. do you see what's on, woman? You know that type of thing. Even through Ernest, I remember taking. One girlfriend to see Ernest Scared Stupid, and all she wanted, she was like kissing my neck, trying to give me a hickey and everything, and I'm like, woman, you know, I'm like, you wore ozone, is you know, I'm just like <laughs> laughing, I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know, and she's just, yeah, I was like, yeah, later for you, I got <laughs> Ernest, you know, he's with me forever. Ernest is forever. That's right, as the kids say. Oh my gosh. You know, you gotta get that going. Forever Ernest. <laughs> Ernest lives. Oh, Ernest Jr. can have like a son. Oof. No, they've tried to do that. Oh, okay. There's stuff on YouTube, people doing that. Oh. But hashtag Ernest lives. Yes. <laughs> Keep the man alive. <laughs> um, but Ernest has nothing to do with Bangoria. Bangoria, no. So, so yeah, so um, that was. Uh, the night go you know those early 90s i would say really really it was thick oh you know fangoria me anything i could do horror wise it was just a big part of of the siege mm -hmm. and what became and what i am today I guess. yes so early 90s early 90s it was very pivotal for for many reasons um, but there was something also that, that happened uh, to you in the early 90s, Mr. Tansky, that I, I, I know that we share uh, similar situations. Um, you see, folks, as I said, my first real encounter with Fangoria was through the, the videotape weekend. 
Fangoria's Weekend of Horrors. Yes. What is the Weekend of Horrors, you may be asking? It's wonderful. Well, the Weekend of Horrors was a, a, a horror convention. Before there were. It was started horror. by Creation. Yes. Who also did science fiction conventions, Star Trek conventions. Oh, creation is still going to this day, actually. Are they really? Yes, they are. Nice. Um, well, I wonder if they're going to bring it back. Oh, man. I mean, with the magazine. Man. So, that leads us into uh, us as individuals going beyond the page of Fangoria. <laughs> We were now stepping in to the pages of Fangoria. Yes. And what that meant to a horror fan, <laughs> a young horror fan in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. So you, Mr. Tansky, in what, 1991, was it? Uh, when was Army of Darkness? Did that come 92. out? 92. Yeah, so 91. So you went. Got to experience your first well, Fangoria weekend. my dad went to one in New York City many years prior. Yes, they were, uh, yes. Uh, and that uh, fondest of memories. I didn't get to go, but he did, and he brought back an accoutrement of, of memorabilia for himself and for me. Uh, and he took many photos, and actually his photos made it into an issue of Fangoria. He took a bunch of Michael Berryman photos, and uh, he got photo credit, which was cool. But, uh... Man, that's someone you don't see at conventions. No, huh? never. Uh, <laughs> Kane Hodder, who? Uh, but in Toronto, Canada, they were doing a Weekend of Horrors, and I was able to accompany him, and it was amazing. Um, I mean, conventions you know now are... are <laughs> first of all, every autograph was free, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you could just take photos willy-nilly. Um, they didn't have as many celebrities back then, but um, I mean, Bruce, well, Bruce Campbell was supposed to be there, but he uh, had to cancel because he was filming Army of Darkness. But Linnea Quigley, Steve Johnson, Herschel Gordon Lewis, Kane Hodder, Tom Savini, uh, they were all there. And they would just walk around the convention and they had all the vendors. It was a tiny room, but still. Uh, and then it's the usual screenings, and they would show previews and have panels and trivia contests and costume contests. All the facets that are around today were happening in the 90s. So this is a thing that's been going on forever, but they yeah. never came back. They said they were going to come uh, Tony uh, Tony uh, said that they would come back, but they never did. But it's, that, that doesn't matter. It still was an amazing experience. So my first Fangoria was 1993. Oh. And that was in New York. Oh, yep. Uh, the, at the Roosevelt Hotel? Um, Pennsylvania. It was It was both. Okay. We would go, it was, because I would, ever, since 93, I just kept going. Okay. Uh, every year. Wow. We would go back. And, and you would then, go with your, your aunt? Or? Um, so the first two times. He'd um, hitchhike. No, the first two times, no. what would happen is my aunt Oh, no, 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 no. The first time, the first time we went was my girlfriend's mom. Whoa. And she was like, it was a surprise. You. It was a surprise. Wow, that's a great uh, Because mom. she had friends down there, she was like, you guys can go to the convention and I'll be with so my friends. So she knew your love and of the, the genre? Oh, 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 yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, because I would make, I was... You know, you would she'd bring let me make movies of, oh. uh, at their house yeah. in their backyard. Wow. <laughs> you know, like they they you know they help make effects and stuff like that. And I, my first girlfriend I had, I was with her for three years. Um, so it was, I guess, serious. It was the first like three years. Serious, serious. serious yeah, yeah. At that age. Um, uh, so it was her who was like, wow. hey, I'm going to, you guys are going to the Fangoria. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and your family was like, please, just I take him. I could not believe it. <laughs> what? And yeah, this was, it truly was like mind blowing. I don't know what the cost was back then. Cheap. Yeah. You know, I had never been to anything like this before, ever. Um, and it really, it really like just started that love of conventions for me um and at this show yeah who's that it was <laughs> it's all the same people <laughs> no, it was, angus it scrim was Wes Otter. craven oh wow it was Stuart gordon it was doug bradley um 
the usual suspects. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's but, funny that but back then, <laughs> thirty, you know, twenty. I was like, what? you know, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is it, and I have all the pictures from that. Oh wow! I'll have to look at this um, later. So, but my biggest, but it was great. My biggest thing at that particular convention was co coming down into a different vendor room and seeing um, Johnny Ramone. Oh, wow. <laughs> and kind of flipping out. He's, isn't, he's the one that collects all the posters. Well, Johnny, I mean, he was a giant horror fan. Yeah. In fact, and, most and of the Ramones Kaiju were and Godzilla huge horror type fans. Stuff, yeah. So, I was like, what? I'm stopping this guy. When am I ever going <laughs> to yeah. meet a Ramon? You know, like, and I love the Ramones. Uh, so I stopped him, took a picture, and I have that picture to this day. Oh, wow. I look like a giant smiling giraffe because I was so skinny. Oh my God. <laughs> and my face is so giant. You know, zit bespeckled. Not much has changed. But, um, and he's like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm fumbling, you know, and not, I have... You weren't punk. And this was, you know, <laughs> this was the cameras you wound and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, Disposable? So my girlfriend was doing that, yeah. and he's like, he goes, so we're going to take a picture of what? You know, I was like, <laughs> but I didn't care. Yeah. I was like, this is, this is it, oh my God, <laughs> Johnny, we're out. Um, but not that the horror, you know, because I, I got my autographs, um... Actually, 94. Anyway, so we went back. Um, the second time, it was my aunt, but my girlfriend again. And that was 1994. Um, and this time, and, I'm kick and I've kicked myself to this day, because at this one, uh, Clive Barker was there. Oh, nice. But so was Robert Rodriguez. Now, Robert Rodriguez was there in a hallway... It was like a dark hallway, okay? One table, Robert Rodriguez with posters of Desperado. Okay, so yeah. That's Desperado it. Desperado was, yeah. <laughs> and he's just sitting there. How and if Anna? people happened to come up to him, he would just sign a poster and give him the poster. And you didn't get it. And I didn't do it, you know? At that point, had his book been out? I think so but what's weird is that at that point i was already making parodies of reservoir dogs and pulp fiction and i had no i had known the name robert, robert rodriguez, rodriguez yeah. you know and i just <laughs> I, oh wow <laughs> pissed me regrets. off regrets i mean later i did see him again oh, okay, good. because of a Did you bring that very up? cool thing. <laughs> no, he, unfortunately, he was very standoffish. Aww. Um, but uh, at that time, you could have been Joe Schmo and he would have, hey, hey. yeah, whatever. <laughs> I just, I can't believe it. It still like bugs me to this day. Because <laughs> I feel like, I think Adam Green did stuff like that as well or he wasn't known as Adam Green. I mean, he was Well, he still kind of does that. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. But you know, before Hatchet. He's, he's yeah, one of the he good was, ones. Yeah. Where it doesn't matter. It's just, oh, yeah, sure, let's let's rap. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, but that was a fresh time, man. That was yeah. young, early Rodriguez, you know? My God. El Mariachi. <laughs> so then 1996 happens and we go back to Fangoria but at this time I start selling via my oh, movies wow. on VHS. Oh no, we had already had them on VHS because so you're about in the interim 1920 then. Uh, yeah, 19. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but my stuff had already been out on VHS because in 1993 a company called Cemetery Cinema uh, who I found through the back of a Fangoria magazine. <laughs> you see, it all comes back. <laughs> um, and sent my stuff to, just thinking, eh, whatever, yeah. let's, you know, I'll send my movies. Why not? Ended up hearing back, uh, and I've had a relationship with that man, Todd Cook, to this day. Uh, but he was the first guy who ever put any of Chris Seaver's movies out wow. on VHS <laughs> through Cemetery Cinema in 1993. Um, so in 96... I had these fresh, 
big VHS cases from Cemetery Center of my movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so me, Casey, uh, our buddies who were part of the LBP group at that, that point time. Uh, my aunt takes us all down, and my aunt goes off and does something else, and we... I gotta do some shopping. We go <laughs> doing that, and that was the beginning of... Can you of remember how much a table selling. cost? Ah, oh, she's probably like... Probably at the 30 time, bucks. Like maybe 50, yeah, maybe, okay. you know? <laughs> Again, at this point, some celebrities were starting to do like the $5 thing. Okay. Right? For, for an autograph. Sure. Nobody was charging pictures. Ooh. That wasn't even a thing. No, that's that's uh, a recent thing because when I was going in, um, my first Monster Mania was 2010, I believe, 2011, and the photo was free with the $25 autograph. Yeah. So so 96 Fango was really the start of me promoting at conventions, and then I just did as many as I could, mm -hmm. Fangoria, Chiller, Fright Vision. It's pronounced Chilla. Every, like just as many yeah. as I could find that weren't Fangoria. <laughs> you know, it was a, a whole new world was opening up. You know? Um, but it all was because of Fango. Fangoria. <laughs> and Fangoria, you would do well at we selling at these? I, maybe, <laughs> you know? I don't. How much would you sell a tape for? At that time, maybe like 10 bucks. Okay. You know? VHS. Yeah. You know, I was probably the cheapest guy on the block. <laughs> You know, because I remember there weren't people like that doing that at that time. There was like maybe two other people, and one of them um, were was making movies or selling movies through uh, at the time Ron Bonk's earlier company, um, and Ron Bonk has SRS Cinema. Um, it was called Salt City Home Video at the time. So I was filmmakers who I know now were there pimping their tapes. And they were selling for like 20 bucks, oh. you know? But I was like, pfft, my I movies are not, yeah, my movies are not anywhere near what these guys were. Even smart. though it's a VHS, it's <laughs> SOV, you know, all that stuff. But we were just kids in the back yard making stupid movies, you know? Now, were you still doing that type of genre movie that you, uh, Comedy horror? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I never, like maybe early, <laughs> Maybe like in the early 90s, some of that stuff was supposed to be like... Somewhat serious. Taken a little seriously. Okay. <laughs> um, but it was ridiculous. I mean, there wasn't... Even if we were doing those silly movies, I mean, those serious horror movies, I was still like acting Throwing buffoonish. A fart joke and, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was... It just was who I was at the time. I just loved horror, but I also loved weird comedy so much because of the stuff that I was exposed to. Mm -hmm. um, so that seemed to be my, what I wanted to do. Okay. It certainly helped that in 1989 I saw Toxic Avenger and Bad Taste. I rented them. And, and that it was, was, it was a double feature. Toxic Avenger? I was just like, wow. 1989, Toxic Avenger, Bad Taste, it blew my mind. Now why did it take so long for you to see Toxic Avenger? That's a good um, five year gap. I beats the crap out of yeah. me, you know? That you know, never, and you're always seeing that. That was never a video connection? That cover, no, it was there. Oh. It just, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna finally see what this hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength yeah. is all about, you know? Was that your first trauma movie as well? Yes, Did you? Okay. absolutely. Oh, wow. Yep. And then after that, I was well, like, yeah, oh, I gotta I see need more, more. Shit. <laughs> uh, Was but, two or three out by then? And when that, was, uh, maybe, but, maybe two had, or, or maybe like two might have been. Maybe it was like, holy shit, I just saw one. Now I gotta go get two. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, I don't know. But I, it was a moment in time. But yeah, friend. definitely bad taste would have been those that. two. Yeah. Like it was like expanding. This was like, well, this was. These are made this for what Chris I Seaver, do, Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and then Low Budget Pictures was born in 1991. But all because of Fangoria. All because you know? of Fangoria. Um, so, okay, so before we get into our favorites, like the covers, yeah, um, and some of the coveted issues we may love and enjoy, um, I will, you brought it up and I'm gonna do it real quick. Uh, <laughs> because of 
making the crappy movies I've made, I, I have been fortunate enough to be in Fangoria throughout the years. Um, and the first issue that I was ever mentioned in was the 2002 issue with Jason X on the cover. Um, all the ads. And I still have it to this day, of course. I've kept every, every magazine that has any mention of me or well, my I movies. Hope so. um, but, and this was just a mention. But a mention in Fangoria magazine. Did you know that you were mentioned? I had no idea. So how no did you idea. come about that? Because you were I got this that, issue. Just, <laughs> I was just like, wait, 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 what? And I flipped out, and I was like screaming. And I called everybody. You it was know. like that thing you do, where they were you freaking know. out. At this point, we were fun. already in the second wave of LVP, um, but still very, very early on. Um, Tempe Entertainment and uh, Full Moon had just—they had just picked up Malva at that point and Filthy McNasty, and so and but they hadn't even really like fully come out by themselves because at this point they were they were extra features on two full moon movies oh, really <laughs> so the, malva was the extra feature on one and filthy was the extra feature on another one and so we would start getting these mentions in the magazines and they would say like well the extra feature was actually better than the movie itself <laughs> <You know? laughs> high praise so anyway it was like oh my god you know um and then, so throughout the years, we were in a couple different issues. Um, one that I'll remember is that in the back, uh, where they do the recap of what was in the magazine, one of the Fango writers proclaimed Chris Seaver to be the next John Waters. Oh, wow. Jeez. I know. <laughs> I was like, that's bullshit. <laughs> one. And two, oh my God. <laughs> That's amazing. I want to know this guy, you know, because if you think my stuff is John anywhere Water. close to that, you know, like, woof. Apparently you need to do a smell movie. Good job, man. <laughs> Yay. Just all farts. Just... Um, and then in 2013, mm -hmm. on the, what was it? It was the issue 322. Uh, I had Evil Dead on the cover. It is up on the wall. I'm not going to get it. Um, but they did an actual full page. Uh, yeah. They did two page spread on me and my films, and that was like you've, you've arrived. Yeah, that's that, you know, drop the mic, and walk away. <laughs> I thought can't we, get any I better thought, than yes, that. Yes, <laughs> I thought it couldn't get any better with just like little mentions here and there, you know. And at that time, we were already in Lloyd Kaufman's first book. So he wrote about us in the book and all that stuff. So we were in print already. Legit. But this was something different. Right. This was like a, you want to interview me for Fangoria <laughs> Magazine? So you we know, got like, that phone call. And, and I was like. <laughs> did, did you tear up just a little? Um, I did when I saw it. Okay. You know? Uh, and they didn't send me. <laughs> they didn't send me any issues. Yeah, I had go. to go out and buy it. But I didn't care. You know, and I bought like a bunch of issues and when gave When you were to paying for it, were you like, I'm in, I'm in this, this is me. You know? No, I didn't, I didn't. Um, but it definitely was a big deal for us. And, and it just sort of, it was almost like a full circle type thing. Yeah. It was like, this this magazine helped shape who I am. So downhill from here. And <laughs> Exactly, I mean, it hasn't gotten better than that issue in 2013, sadly. Um, struggling artist is a real, real thing, folks. Starving artist. Starving artist for sure. <laughs> broke artist, <laughs> broke ass artist. Um, but amazing nonetheless. Yeah. Um, you know, and at that time, you know, Bingo was sort of going down mm. anyway. So, so maybe might, that might, maybe that was the I catalyst. Destroyed, yeah. I helped destroy. <laughs> What's this art? Ah, I'm done with this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm putting this crap in here. Um, so what did, so, I mean, as I brought up before, like the, the downfall was sort of happening and, and, and the quality was yes. waning. Um, and I believe, I think, you know, 
I think the Alexanders really tried to bring it back to its its glory. By then, I think. They were too, really pushing yeah. some old school things within the magazine, yeah. um, bringing back certain um, articles, cer certain themes, certain mm -hmm. like uh, Love, notes yeah. from the underground, yeah. certain, that was coming back, and which was what we were a part of. But um, I just, I remember, I definitely remember being like, you know, like it just wasn't sitting well Sigh. with me. Yeah. Uh, there was the writing was taking a turn. They were getting people that I had known personally writing the magazine who were garbage, <laughs> who just couldn't write. Yeah, um, people weren't getting paid. So, you know, I was really sort of into horror hound yeah. and and Rue Morgue yeah. and, and stuff like that. Ultra violent, which was great. Um, and the Fango thing just started waning. And I remember at that time, I had a subscription and I wasn't getting them, you know? Yeah, they I just weren't that. coming. Yeah, I did. Uh, luckily, that. I was a part of, they, you know, when they were resurrected, I they hooked me up, you know, because right. of all the issues that happened yeah. before. So kudos to them now. Yeah, Phil, no Phil Noble Jr. So Fango died, man. Yeah. Fango was gone. On the table. Beep. And there was, for me, it was a, it was a 50-50 type thing. Right. One, I was like, the quality well, had gone down so yeah. much where you were like, oh, so I was like, well, you know, I'm right. not, I'm not crying over that. <laughs> but there was that other 50 that was like, man, oh. what a legacy. Yeah, such a you part know? of my life. Yes, up. it was yeah. so huge, and I'll always cherish what I loved, what I have, mm -hmm. you know. And it honestly made me go back and sort of like. Hmm, let me just try to fill in some gaps, you know, with my old con gotcha. collection yep. and, and uh, reread what the glory days, you know, which was fantastic. It's a time capsule. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a timeless thing. To I mean, go do you remember your those. sort of like, oh, it's, it's going. Your thoughts was when, it when similar? It was, when it was done? Yeah, when yeah. it was just kind of like, Well, eh. it wasn't even... Uh, I mean, when I went to Barnes and Noble, I would skip those issues because it just didn't really mean anything to me anymore. Yeah. And I would pick up uh, a whorehound and, and read that and start getting those issues because it, it was just better articles and better ads. And we didn't talk about that. The ads, the old ads in Fangoria are such a. I could have bought and bought and not oh, a word. Yeah. Bought is not a word. It's actually written down here. <laughs> I did purchased ah. all these things like. Vinyl and masks. I wonder and if I should. T-shirts. Hmm. Bought not a word. Go up there. I have. So you know, you could buy sweatshirts, oh, yeah. T-shirts, in the back of Fango, or just an ad in Fango. Um, you know, the classic Freddy, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Leather face, all that stuff. But they also sold 3D horror shirts in Fangoria. Oh, yeah. And this was actual latex rubber pieces. With the hand, like the yes. monsters coming out? Oh my I god. I bought one. You did. <laughs> I bought the aliens one. Oh well, yeah. And I still have it. And I would wear it to school. And that's That's of, why you were the weird kid. Yeah, well that's one of the situations where <laughs> we're sending I was a note home vocally getting yelled at by other kids like what is your problem what? you're so you're, weird yes, you're so, that was constant you're so weird Seaver. <laughs> such a weirdo or that, that's why do you got to be weird that's your biography you know? title you're yeah. so weird or Seaver. why do you have to be weird <laughs> um yeah man ghost like, writer of course because i always wore that crap i always wore horror shirts I remember one, it was Bad Taste. I don't know if I want to bring it up now, but it was, it was a Bad Taste. Not Bad Taste the movie, but oh, okay. it was in Bad Taste. But it was a horror shirt. Uh, I didn't particularly pieces? like... I didn't really particularly oh. like the band. Oh. Um, but it kind of made fun of a situation that was horrible. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> but I did that, and people were, like, flipping out well, on that. me. And I'm like, <laughs> Even back then. Like, Come on. <laughs> You know, I, I feel did. like you did that a lot. I did. I was like, whatever. <laughs> like, I ain't got time for this. Um, so, yeah, I do. So, there's those shirts. So, know? yeah, looking through old issues, you're like, oh, my God. I, and I get that inkling, like, what if I, what if I send this in? <laughs> so, that's where I first saw 
you know, where you'd see the Dick Smith makeup book yeah. and or Tom Savini's Grand Illusions. Yeah, yeah. And I, so I saw it in Fangoria and the first time I ever came to Rochester, I was probably, it was probably 1990 or something. Wow. I was 13 years old. So we came, we came up here to a, a comic book shop. It was the first time also that I Empire stepped. Empire Comics? I can't even remember what okay. it was, but I stepped, it was the first time I stepped into a Toys R Us as well, because we just oh, wow. didn't have them around yeah. us. We had the Hills. Grease, the Grease one? We had KB. Beats the, beats the oh, fuck wow. out of me, you know? But it was a family trip. It was like, we're going to Rochester. It was two hours away. We were going to the mall. We are going to Toys R Us. That was the occasion? Just, just Yeah, we are just going, going up okay. to shop, man. And me being like, we got to go to like a place that has comics. We got to go to a place that has I feel like it might have been Empire. Toys and stuff like really that. was really the only... Because that's the one I would go to. I remember it being very dark. And I know Empire, you know? But I'm trying to think of... It was dark. It had a giant Godzilla. Like a, a blow-up Godzilla in there. Um, they had two locations. But the only reason I think it was was because later going into Empire. Um, oh, wait, you're right. It might not be. Oh, well, maybe it is. They had a rack of magazines that were really old. Like, yeah. it was horror. Yeah. It was, And they would have Clive Barker's, like, you know, the making of Nightbreed and shit yeah. like that. All that oh, stuff. Right, so right. anyway, I get into this this store, 13 years old, and from the pages of my Fangoria, right there on the shelves were the Dick Smith makeup book and Grand Illusions, volume one and two, and my aunt bought them for me that oh, day. I still, great, I still have them. Aunt. I still have them to this day. My Grand Illusions is falling apart. Oh. I'm trying to keep it together. Please make it up. Because <laughs> Tom Savini was, I mean, oh, he was- he's a god. He was god today. Yeah. He, 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 Totally was. Um, so yeah, so you'd get that stuff. And then in the oh, early that. 90s, into the mid 90s, um, I would get Blackest Heart Media, the catalog, from the back of a Fango. You know, you'd send in your $3 and then you'd get this giant friggin', you know, magazine catalog. It was right. just, and that's where I would get my imports, my VHS import oh. bootlegs. You know, and I'd see stuff that I had only been reading about or dreaming about. Amazing, amazing. It's all, oh, it's all crazy. So good. Yeah. It's all come, come wash it back. So, um, why don't we talk about some of our, do you have some stuff to show? Or like some of our favorite issues? Issues, well, covers, things that really stick with you. I actually just picked this up. Mm. And oh, it dang. is the Fangoria cover to cover book. And I read the reviews and everybody was like shitting on it. But why? I don't know. Just they, because they wanted it's articles or what? A cover book? But it's literally just all the covers of Fango. It's wonderful. That's amazing. I mean, from, from like early days and then it goes all the way up to. Hmm. Pan's that, Labyrinth, yeah. so it's a lot of the recent stuff. More polished. But that yeah, that's that's all it is. That's and I, I I found it for a good price, and I picked it up. And um, for a dollar ninety nine. No, I wish. <laughs> See, it comes back. Little shop. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that's amazing. Well, I would get that. And. Again, a wave, like we discussed, a wave of memories. Just, I remember that issue. I remember that oh, issue. Oh I remember that issue. Um, you know, V. Where is my V issue? <laughs> House, you know. But, uh, yeah. But, yeah. So, I went through that, and I picked out some of my favorite covers. Okay. Yeah. Um, some of my favorite covers um, I wrote down. Well, that what I, do you got? That I remember. Um... The, it, it was The Making of Nightmare 3. I think and I have on that. on the cover, is that it's Freddy smiling. Issue that, number 64. Sure. Oh. But <laughs> it's burned into my head. Um, it's the one where he's, he's smiling. Smile. Yeah. He's got that. That's what I got. I got that one, too. Um, I love that cover. It's, it's always stuck with me. Let's see if I can find it. That's in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, there's uh, that one. I have that well, one, too. I have that two. one, too. Pumpkin head. There it is. There it is. That's the one. Right there. I love that one. That's one of my favorite covers. Um, the Fright Night 2. Oh, with the vampire. Uh, she's in full vampire mode. Yep. Her maw is like right on the cover. Well, there's the... Uh, Regine. Oh, that, the that was, the this, was, this was my first issue, folks. My first issue of Fangoria. I don't know why I haven't recollected that. Um, and I wish I still had the tattered pages. Which is interesting because I do have 89? a lot of tattered pages still left. Let me see. Um, was, 80, was that 89? Um, 90? 88. 88. 88. Yes, 88. There it is. There it is. I love this one, too. With Freddy and the... That's a great one, too. Part four. Um, another cover I love is the Little Shop of Horrors one. I with just, Audrey 2. Audrey 2 on the know, cover. I just had it. Yeah, Audrey 2. Right here? I got it. You got it. <laughs> this one, right? Yes, that is it. That is it. Um, yeah, there you go. Oh, that's a good one too. These are great ones. Look at these folks. Good God. Good, good, good God, sir. <laughs> oh, see, look at this. See, this is one I. Godzilla comes to America in the back. Hotel Hell issue. This scared the shit out of me as a kid. This is what we're talking about. Oh, look at that. You get the fold out. Oh, and then they add Steve posters. Man. Oh, I think my dad has that still. Massacre masks. Mm. Mm -mm. On the back. Look at that. That is a command. Is that, what do you got? You can take the protein. Oh. Terminator. Coming. Oh, <laughs> Children of the Night. The first uh, Fango movie. That's right. I, oh, and the trading cards. Remember the trading cards? Fact, yeah. Uh, I forgot to bring them down. <laughs> but I think all of us kids had, the, had those trading cards. We if you were into horror. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, we're uh, watching uh, Children of the Night this weekend. Really? Yeah, because I brought up to, I was like, hey man, do you remember that? Because I had the VHS, that's all I have. Yeah. And I was There's asking Sean if he converted another it. Cover, the you Halloween know? 4, that's one of my favorites. Because Halloween 4 was the first Halloween movie I saw in theaters, so. Um, another cover I love is the um, uh, Friday the 13th uh, New Blood, part seven. It was the first look of Jason, John Carl Beekler's Jason, Kane Hodder's Jason. Um, I, I mean, that one stuck with me because, yes, I loved Freddy growing up, but I also really, really love Friday the 13th. I love Jason. Those two are this neck one? and neck. That's, that's the one. Right and I just remember being like, you gotta be shitting me. Like this is what Jason looks like in the new oh, one, yeah. you know? Like had this had this, the movie been out at by that point? I can't I, I don't know if I had seen it by that point. Okay. You know? I'm trying to think. June. But anyway, so it blew my mind. So it's yeah. it's it has one hundred percent stuck with me. Um here, let me Oh. This one Oh, Warlock. You just I, got that back, right? I recently talked yeah. about this. This is the pristine issue that I recollected recently. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, right there. <laughs> and this one was great, too. Um, this was the sequel issue at the time. This was 1993. Or maybe 1992. No, 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 wow. 1993. Early 1990. Stoker got back-to-back -back issues. Look at that. Um... Subspecies 2, Warlock the Armageddon. Still, Jason Goes to Hell hadn't come out yet. Uh, they were doing reshoots at the time. They were just teasing um, Wes Craven's new Nightmare, but it was called Nightmare 7 at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that in the back where they would talk about what movies were going to be coming out. Oh yeah, so it was the, oh, cool. the 
Fear Fright Cast or Fear Funk Tastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, oh, this is another one. This was from a 90s. This was uh, the big uh, Freddy, I mean, um, Jason Goes to Hell coverage. And you can see I had started to cut out of it. I'm sure if you open this up, oh, on the back, there's oh, stuff, in the back, there's stuff ripped out. <laughs> uh, yep. But this is this is mine from back then, and this is. Oh wow, that was a holding the dragon slayer one. That's your original. This is the original. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. And it's and it's got. Oh, it's got pages. <laughs> it's there's like oh, oh look. Cool. I wonder who was there. Who did I, who did Adams, I cut out there? The Adams family, maybe. It was Freddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh sequels. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, yep. There's an ooh cut out. Hmm. I wonder what was up on my wall. But I kept it because it was it was a big deal to me. It was like all these sequels were coming out, and so I'm able to have both. From my youth, the actual issue, and then the bring these up. The recollected. I love these. We missed. Had the old uh, movie magazines. Yeah, like so. I mean, back then they did it with everything. You had right. movie su souvenir magazines. Mostly the blockbusters. Um, and it was but just a whole behind the scenes. Occasionally they would do the the horror movies, like uh, Freddy Five through Eight. I believe had one. That's right. Um, I started recollecting some of those. Freddy vs. Jason, yeah. Brain scan. Mmm. Mmm! <laughs> Dripping. Oh, so what? This is also good. Mmm! <laughs> Hurt me. <laughs> oh, please hammer. Don't hurt him. Uh, so this one, look here. This, where'd it go? Where did it go? Now, at the same time I bought that issue of Fangoria. Gorezone. I got Gorezone. Same company. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the Gorezone was a little stickier. <laughs> it was a little filthier oh. as far as the... the you, had to, you had to take a shower. Yeah, as far as the it. horror was concerned. Um, and for me, at the time, it was like double the pleasure, triple the fun. You know oh, what I'm saying? It was there. You were getting so much horror and gore and gore. everything that gore. you wanted. New word. Gorezone, Fangorio, and Hannah. Now, Gorezone didn't last very long. No. Um, and I have a, you know, a handful of issues, but this was the first door zone that I bought on the shelves. Same year. I think, uh, as my first Fangoria. Was that issue one or no? Um, Seven, I gotcha. I think the basket case two issue was my first door zone. Just, I mean, this stuff is just, I'm telling you, man. Ooh, they did these too. This was great too. They did their big... The, du the double issue. Yeah, double issues. And this was the special blood drenched 50th issue. Oh my god. They would do the bloody best of Fangoria. Right. They would do um, full on poster magazines. Oh, yeah. I still have a couple of those. Uh, so, man, like this is just. Those hmm. posters, I would 1986, put up. guys. Smell it. Ooh, look at this. Oh, we got some reanimator. The reanimator. Woo! The school counselor is being called about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, shit. That's right. I have that Explorers. Yeah, Ben's got that at the office. I want an octopus magazine. <laughs> Guys. This, this is, is just this is grand. It's yeah. a grand old time. This is great stuff. And now... Ben goes back. Fangoria, my friends, has returned from the Grave. Let me 
These are the first two issues of the new Valoria. Volume two. Yes, volume two. How clever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and these aren't these aren't these aren't your father's magazines. Oh my gosh, guys! Like, reach through and feel this, would you? Look how thick, thick that is. Look at that. Mm. You could kill someone <laughs> if you were Jason Bourne. You could, right to the throat. This, you don't even this, have to roll it up. These ain't crappy. This is this is some hard paper, guys. This is you're getting quality. your money's worth. Yes. So when they released that they were, you know, the price of the subscription and everybody was freaking out, this is this is what you're getting. And this is pure Yeah, quality. but it's worth it. Yes. You know? And not only does it, what I like about it is it feels nostalgic. Um, but also you're, modernizing. Yes, they're yeah. modernizing it. They're modernizing it. Modernize. <laughs> it feels fresh, yeah. but not. I mean, the cover, it's the, the old style, of the film reel. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Look at that. Ugh. The third issue, um, I'm patiently waiting. I, I I'm, as, I I'm as not well. sure why we haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> yeah, and I said that too. I tweeted, I said, when should I be worried that I haven't gotten it yet? And they said they've been shipped. So. Yeah, well, I did. I got their message saying it shipped. Yeah. You know? But it's been, it's been a while. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting for it. I want that white bag now. Since, yes. Uh, since that got hopefully all won't be torn up, funked as I've been seeing. Oh no! But they'll make good on it. They they are the people that are running this, top notch. Well, what could what could destroy this? Oh well, that's true. Too. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, they could stop a bullet. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna be using it's this Kevlar and uh, Fango. It's my new vest. <laughs> wow. But uh, it's back, guys, and it's it's wonderful. Really exciting. Yeah. Great articles. Uh, it's a great time to be a horror fan. It's a great time to be a Fango fan. Yeah. So many things from our childhood, not just the 80s, not Everything's just the cartoons, the movies, Everything's the coming toys, back. toys, but our magazines, our, our genre magazines are coming back. Our horror hosts are coming back. Joe Bob Briggs is coming, coming it back. Every, every Friday. Elvira is still out there, Billy's. kicking it, looking amazing. Yes. My God. You, you 80s kids know what we're talking about. Yeah. And, and we hopefully, have, hopefully the Muppet magazine will come back. Everything. Well, Premier, the Muppets are coming back. Pr premiere, the Muppet show It's coming yeah, back. the Muppets are coming back. Another magazine Disney Plus. I would love Toy Fair to come back. I know it won't. Toy Fair would be great. Oh Wizard God. would be great. Starlog. Um, Let's bring back Starlog. Same company, Starlog. <laughs> Where'd that go? <laughs> Cinefan Cinema Fantastique. Oh, that's Remember that? Too. Cine Fantastique. Cine Fantastique. Femme Fatale. No. Oh. Mm -hmm. We got some of those too. Yeah, he likes that. <laughs> Good God. We're living in a golden grand, age. Grand time. That's right. Grand That's right. time. Oh, this one. I'll show this real quick. This was, this was uh, my. I got this at the '95. Oh. Fango. No, '94. This was the '94 Fango show. Um. And I bought it at the show, at the Fangoria Weekend of Horrors, and I have autographs in here. So I, I went say. around to the people who were there and got autographs. So there are autographs in here oh. of the people that were at the show. And who? Free autographs. What? What? Have we all gone mad? Can you imagine walking up to somebody and they... Just signed it? Signed it? Out of the goodness of their hearts? Without saying, yeah, that'll be like 45 bucks. Oh, that's a lot. Oh. Yeah, it smells like old sewage. Oh, I don't know. It smells like 1994, so that was. What was that? What were you wearing uh, then? 17, 17 jupe? years. Were you wearing jupe back yeah, then? I was wearing... <laughs> what were you wearing there? Uh, I don't know. So, I was suave like Capri Sun. Suave shampoo. What are you? Capri Sun mixed you... with. Uh... Oh, despair. <laughs> mixed with spaghetti O's. Oh yes, with Frank's. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right, folks. We've been yapping far too long. I think it's time we, we go cry in a corner. Oh. Thinking about is, our memories is. of Fangoria in the 1980s. But they were good nice. memories. They so were I don't fantastic know if we'd memories. Be crying, and it's back, so there's no reason. I am to glad that it's back. Shed a tear. Folks, if you wanna you wanna check it out, just go to Fangoria. Get that subscription. Mm -hmm. If you're a Fango kid, if you're a monster kid, it is worth it. Believe me. Believe us. Yes. We we wouldn't Trust lie. In we us. wouldn't. We won't betray you. We'll never betray or go you. back and get those old issues. They're yeah. Come on, guys. As long as you can, not you can find old issues. Those prices up. 
uh, as as Price cheap gouging. as like five bucks. Yeah, you know, they are out there. They are calling to lots. You can they probably get a calling lot. Calling you, calling you. What he said. Songs. Who cries for the children? I do. It's a musical. Fango the musical. Ooh. We're stars. We are magic in the night. Fango t-shirts. Fright That's what I was going to say. I was Fright going rags. to that. Fright rags. <laughs> Fright dash your rags. Fango t-shirts. We got, we got some new ones they're coming out, thick, hopefully. They're getting wet. They're getting moist. They're getting thicker. It's just the logo, but great. it looks wonderful. It's yeah, wonderful. I got I to gotta jump on that. Yeah, jump, on, jump on it. Jump on it. Anyway, that was it. That was a good episode. It was, yeah. It made me really, I want to get that monster club going again. That Fango <laughs> horror just, club. You gotta build a shed. I mean, basically, it's down here. True, but I want <laughs> you to build a shed. <laughs> okay, guys. So this was this is Chris. Hi. And Chris. And uh, this was a crep from the '80s, and we will get you on the next. Uh, um, Flippity flip. Yep. Flip flop. Bye. <laughs>